Here's a shocking statistic for you. Did you know that two thirds of all American retirees consider returning to work sometime in the first three years after retirement? And why is that, right? The natural answer is, well, you know, because they were running low on money or retirement was more expensive than what they thought. But you know what? That's not the major case. That, that accounts for one fourth of the people uh, that are considering going back to work. But the other three fourths have other reasons that they were thinking about it. So, so what did they not know when they retired that they knew after they retired? And that's what today's video is on is, I'm gonna give you eight things that people wish that they knew before they retired. And it's better that we know these before we retire rather than after. And be sure to stay to the end because the last two are, are the ones that I think are the biggest drivers and the ones that I think drive people um, the, the most and, and have an impact on whether you have a happy retirement or not. Uh, so let's jump in. The first reason uh, for that people uh, think about returning to work is, is just relationships. You know, your relationships change when you're in retirement. Um, you think about your friends and your circle of friends and the activities that you do. And you know, how many of those at some point relate to work? Maybe somebody at work told you about a, a great movie or a musical that you and your partner should go see, or somebody at work introduced you to a friend of theirs that becomes a good friend of yours as, as well. And so, you know, work is, is, is not just work, right? Work is also so, social. And while people at work may not be your best friends, right, we still like hanging around them. We're human, we're social creatures, and we're gonna miss that interaction uh, when we quit working. So that's one class of relationships. The other class of relationships is, uh, which is number two here, is your relationship with your partner, if you have a partner, you know what, that's probably gonna change in retirement because for probably most of the time that you've known this person, either you or you and your partner have both been working. So your life's gonna change when one of you or both of you is no longer working, right? You're gonna have a lot more time together. And for some people that ends up being a great thing and for other people it can cause some stress. So again, planning ahead can really be important. If you're on different pages, if you have different visions of what retirement looks like, it's probably worthwhile to, to have an open and candid conversation with one another and really focus on listening and, and seeking to understand what your partner's vision of retirement is and be candid with your vision of retirement as well. And then try to see, you know, is there a middle ground uh, that works for both of you or is there a way where you can both get the things that you're most excited about, right? So the first two reasons really have to do with, with relationships. Um, the, the third one, which I think is super important is that you know, so many of us focus our time in retirement planning on looking for the number and how do I get to quote unquote the number? Uh, you know, how do I save it and what account should be in it? Uh, should the money be in? And these are super important things, but it's not the end all to be all, right? There's these non quantitative aspects of retirement that are super important and super important for us to think about. Um, and I think another thing that people realize once they leave work is, you know, they probably had more flexibility than they thought at work. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Oftentimes transitioning into retirement can be a super healthy way uh, to make your retirement more joyful and less of a surprise, right? So let's say you're working 40, 50, 60 hours a week you get, you've been at your job for a while, you get three, four, maybe five weeks of vacation, you know? Is there a way to work four days a week? Is there a way to work three months uh, from your office in one month remotely? Let's say you wanna travel, you know, could you work from Europe for one month? Could you work from Southeast Asia from a, for a month? Maybe twice a year, could you do that? And if the alternative is, you know, you either do that or you're gonna retire, I think a lot of companies, particularly, you know, if, if you're a high, if you're, if you're a valuable employee, if you're good at what you do, if your heart's in the right place and you're like, look, I just, I need some time to be thinking about what retirement looks like. I want to transition successfully into that. 
Uh, and I want it to be a win-win for the organization, right? If they have more time to plan for your departure, if they have more time to train your team um, to do the things that you're doing now, uh, that could be a nice win-win. And I think after people retire, they realize, you know, I probably should have talked to my boss and seen, you know, could I have done this? I Should I have talked to my team and, and transition in as opposed to it being all or nothing? And I call these one month periods and you might be, who knows, you might be able to take a sabbatical and take two or three months off. I call these periods of time mini retirements. And if you're, if you're interested in mini retirements, I've got a video up here uh, that will tell you more about mini retirements and their advantages. Okay, um, let's, let's keep going. The, the next one is, is kind of related to that, which is you don't have to wait until you're retired to have adventures. Right? How do you blend that into your working life now? Uh, and some people realize after they retire, same thing as above the last one, you know, that they could have weaved some of these adventures in uh, and, and maybe been gone from work more often or, or tried out different things along the way. Uh, you don't want to wait till you're 70 years old to do some of these adventures. But, you know, can you weave these in in your 50s, in your, you know, your late 50s, your early 60s, rather than just retiring? Uh, so that's another thing people wish. Uh, another big one, and, and now we're getting into the ones that really move the needle, is people wish they had focused on their health earlier. You know, ultimately, as much time as we spend saving money, earning money, thinking about the financial plans. You know, I think we should spend just as much time on our health because, you know, once your health is lost, I'm going to be 59 here in a couple of weeks. And, you know, at my age, it takes a while to get my health back, right? And as we get older, it takes even longer. So really investing in yourself, investing in your health, eating in as healthy of a manner as you can, um, taking the time to, to go to the gym or uh, to work out at home, taking that time to stay healthy. Um, and, and certainly at least half of that battle takes place in the kitchen. And the other half of the battle, you know, takes place while you're sweating. Uh, and some people would say it's 80-20, who knows, but take the time uh, to take care of your health. That's a big regret. Okay, and now on, on for the two big ones. And before we get there, I have a favor to ask. If you're enjoying this video, uh, as the kids say, thumbs for likes, subs for love, and comments for a soul. I love reading your comments. If you hadn't hit the like button yet, please do. It helps the algorithm find other people like yourself that hopefully these videos uh, can prove helpful for. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, the next one is uh, the thing people wish they had known before they retired is really thinking about the cash flows that you need in retirement and what the tax characteristics of those cash flows are going to be. You know, if you need, I'm just making up a number, if, if you need to take $50,000 a year out of your retirement accounts, there's a big difference between taking $50,000 a year out of a regular IRA versus taking $50,000 a year out of a Roth IRA. I call it my three buckets and high level those three buckets are, you know, don't tax me now, but tax me later, which is a, a regular IRA, a regular 401k. The other account is a tax me now, but never again account. And those are your Roth 401ks, your Roth IRAs. Uh, and then the tax me as I go account, which are accounts like at, at your bank account, where you're paying, you know, the interest that you receive, you're paying for that every year. Uh, if you want to learn more about the three bucket strategy, I've got a video up here that you can watch. Super helpful and super important. It's never too late to start on that, but it's like uh, the saying goes about a tree, right? The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So be sure to watch that video. Okay. Uh, another really important one is thinking about what risk is. You know, if you're working with a financial advisor, I should say this, none of this in today's video is financial advice. Really what I want to do is give you some things to think about so that you can research them on your own or even better work with a fee-only financial advisor. But, you know, thinking about what risk is, yes, you know, there, do you have a 70% chance of succeeding in your retirement plan or a 95% chance of succeeding? Yes, that's, that's risk, but you know what another really important risk is? And that's if you're 60 years old, you likely only have a thousand weeks left of healthy active time 
that's not a lot of time. So think about that risk as well. If you like today's video, I know you're going to like this video up here where I talk about the average income in retirement and this video down here where I, where I talk about five reasons to retire as soon as you can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.